This is what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Yo, yo. What up, though, people? Like to welcome you back to the Keep It a C No podcast. As always, I am your boy Brown. To the left of me, we got your boy John. Yeah, though. What up, though, John? Not much. Same old, same old. Let's get into it. It looks like we had a uh, Eagles rally party or something. I see you representing the five and O team. Shout out course, to that. Of course. Shout out to everybody that's tuned in. If this your first time tuning in, salute to you. Do us a favor. Hit the sub button, like button, and the bell to stay notified when we drop new content. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. If you agree with something, disagree with something, want to correct us or something, or if you just want to call us an Uber, let us know in the comments. Just make sure you keep it a C note, and please share this video with someone that likes to talk sports and entertainment just like you so that we can all talk that talk together. Funniest thing I've seen all week, we got analysts. We got Cowboys fans. We got sports fans. Everybody is throwing Dak Prescott under the bus. Everybody's saying they don't know if they, if Dallas should move on from Dak. Can Dak win them a Super Bowl? Is Dak the quarterback? And it's not funny because they're throwing him under the bus. It's funny because... For the last two years, I've been saying Dak Prescott ain't a top 10 quarterback. And they call me all type of Ubers. They grind me up. For two years, I've been saying Dak Prescott ain't even better than Jared Goff. I've been called all type of Ubers. Here's the thing. Every year we got uh, Dak Prescott, top 10 quarterback. Most of these lists, he's top five. Oh. And I want to keep it a C note with y'all. Not only is Dak not a top 10 quarterback, but he's not even top five in the NFC. He's not, and I'm not going in particular order, but he's not better than Goff. He's not better than Stafford. He's not better than Hurts. He's not better than Kirk Cousins. I don't even think he's better than Purdy. No, don't. No. So, you know, I'm just keeping it a C note. John, I do believe you were one of them people, though, that called me a Uber on the Jared Goff thing. I'm not sure. You know, I might, my, my, my recollection may be a little off, but I think you called me a Uber when I said Jared Goff was better than Dak Prescott. So, what's your thoughts? It, I don't know if you did or not. I can't remember. But is, is Goff better than Dak Prescott? Right now, yes. Yes. So, so you were taking? Yeah, I'll take Jared Goff all day over Dak Prescott. Like you said, like people were arguing whether he's a top 10 quarterback, but I don't believe he's even a top 10, like you said, top 10 quarterback in the NFC. So You don't, you don't got him top 10 in the NFC? Um, no, not really. Like I, I think the Cowboys need to go in that another direction. He's proven week after week after week what, what he can do and what he's going to uh, give out to the team. And it's bad when your own team doesn't have faith in your quarterback. Your right. own defense doesn't have faith in, your, in their own quarterback. Right. So, like, I don't know what's going on behind closed door, what type of relationship he has with Jerry Jones and the coach or whatever, but it, I think it's time for them to go in a different direction. You just got Trey Lance. Put him out there. I'm sorry. I hate to say it, but it's, it's about that time. Yikes. Um... Let me ask you this, though. Y'all 5-0. Oh. Yeah. Five weeks in, we going into week six. After five weeks, who's the MVP of the season so far? After five weeks, you, you, it could go either way. Like, right now, I, I'm, I would like, I, I think it's Jalen Hurts. Okay. But, I mean, other people's eyes, you could say it's Brock Purdy. Why you say Jalen Hurts, though? Uh, because, like, I remember before we talked about MVPs, and I said a, po a positional player that's not a quarterback. I said something like Justin Jefferson. But I, I realized that MVPs, they're all going to be based off of quarterbacks to me. Right. And if a team is doing good, they're going to give it to the quarterback. Right. And I just think that the Eagles, 
game after game, they've been getting better, but they have the tools, and Jalen Hurts, he has the weapons to get it done. And um, and with that type of team and that system, I think he's, like, MVP prone. He he has a 5-0 record with his squad. Same thing with Brock Purdy, but, I mean, the Eagles, to me, honestly, the Eagles didn't win in the same fashion as the 49ers have in their in their five games. Right. But uh, I give it up to the 49ers. They balling. I give it to Brock Purdy, too. But he, he led his team to a 5-0 and start. So if you can go me, I'm picking Jalen Hurts. But you couldn't go wrong with having Brock Purdy at this point. That That's who I would go. I would go Brock Purdy. Okay. And I, I'm going Brock Purdy because I think he got like nine touchdowns, no interceptions. He's had a couple games with only two, three incomplete passes. In, in this season so far, I would go him. But I I, I, I want to piggyback off something you just said because I'm starting to realize that it's not just from the fans, that the hate for, for, for Matthew Stafford is real. Because you just said MVP is based off the quarterback, right? Yeah. That year Cooper Cup was triple crown. Matthew Stafford wasn't in the MVP conversation whatsoever. The Super Bowl? Mm-hmm which I believe Stafford, even though Cup got it and he deserved it, Stafford was throwing him the ball and getting it there when he was triple teamed. He didn't win the MVP then. So by you saying that, because I do believe quarterbacks have the upper hand on getting yeah. it, but for some reason, I believe it's some type of bias towards Matt Stafford, <laughs> if you look at it. Because how can your receiver be a triple crown threat winner and you not even be top five MVP vote getter? You see what I'm saying? I don't know. But uh, but, at the, but at the same time, though, um, I, I kind of, as much as I, I, I don't have no hate towards Matthew Stafford. He is what he is. Uh, but I always like to see someone get that MVP that's not a quarterback. To me, it's too traditional. Right. Almost when they give it to a quarterback. Right, right. Um, but not to say Matthew Stafford didn't deserve it that year because, like you said, he was getting him the ball. Right, it and I don't him. even mean he should have been the MVP of the regular season. I just mean at least in the voting process, like, yeah. you know what I mean? And he wasn't. But let me ask you this. after Because this year we got a couple good offensive rookies. After five weeks, who would be your rookie of the year? I'm going to give you three choices. Mm -hmm. C.J. Stroud, mm -hmm. still no interceptions after five games. Puka Nakua, mm -hmm. he's breaking records. Uh, or you got Sam Laporta from Detroit. He's also like the first tight end in a couple years to be like a rookie and lead the league and target, I mean, targets for tight ends and stuff. I think they said something else, like receiving yards maybe or catches. Not catches, but like receiving yards. But who would you have? I would probably go with quarterback Straw. Straw? Yeah. Um, I think I, I like his play style. Uh, I think in years to come, he could actually turn that franchise around. Uh, he's developed a good relationship with uh, Nico Collins. Right. Uh and, and they still also have young talent, Tony Dell, but uh, with Tank Dell, excuse me. But yeah, I'm definitely going uh, Stroud. You know me, I'm going Puka. Yeah. I'm going Puka. He so far, you see, I, Stroud. I, I, now the cup is back, though. Continuing the season, Stroud probably will get it because I yeah. think Puka, um, his volume didn't go down the first week. Cup was I, back. I like Puka. I, I do. I, I even have him on my fantasy teams. But I, I get frustrated, though, because there's sometimes he gets a good pass and he drops it. Yeah, sometimes he, <laughs> yeah, sometimes he but drops But he's, he's a great route runner. But I give it to him. He's I will say this. I know you got him on fantasy, yeah. but I know a couple of them passes that he dropped or they was right over his hands. Yeah, I was on. No, 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 no. I'm talking about it. In week five against the Eagles. I know you was happy when he was dropping them passes and they was going over his head. Because a I, couple I, I, of them Jones was drive, drive um, killers. Yeah, but, I mean, it was a couple times where I actually did hope he caught that shit, though. Oh, once y'all was secure yeah. with the win and all yeah. that? Scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> but since, since we talk in fantasy, uh, uh, since we talk fantasy football, you said you got him on your team. Yeah. You got to start him, um, sit him for this week? Um, My start him, sit him, let me see. I would definitely start 
Uh, Justin Jefferson at, out. Uh, I think Butch McCollum's going to have a, a, a great game. Addison. Jordan must, Addison. Must start. Uh, okay. Um, like I said, we was just talking about the quarterback, so I'm definitely another Nico Collins start. Okay. He, um, and to me, this week, even though I have him a sit, I'm sitting Mike Evans. I don't think he's a fully 100%. He's going to come into this game. I think this hey. is going to be a more of a game that I would start Chris Godwin. Right. Over Mike Evans, so and Godwin targets went up um, when Mike Evans was shaking up in that last game. Yeah, before so before the bye, so I would give him like a I would give Mike Evans like a game to see like how it's going to go. I don't think he's at a hundred percent, but uh, yeah, okay, okay. So this week, I know if you got Ramondre Stevenson, he's been killing you. I've got Ramondre Stevenson in one of my leagues, and he's been killing <laughs> me. But all the criticism Belichick is facing, um, I think this week against Vegas, Vegas, they give up a lot of rushing yards. So I think if Belichick don't get behind early paws, I think Ramondre Stevenson has his good game this week against Vegas. Me, personally, on the sit em tip, pause. Depending on who you have, if you have good wide receivers on your team, I'm sitting Garrett Wilson against the Philadelphia Eagles. Just look, last, last week against Denver, he did nothing. With Garrett Wilson and Zach Wilson as the quarterback, week to week is going to be like holding your breath playing him. Yeah. But if I'm not saying sitting if you don't got no other receivers because he is a number one. But if you got a couple other options, I would sit Garrett Wilson. I'm just keeping it a C note. I ain't touching nobody. Pauls off of uh, the Jets anymore. Once that 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 quarterback situation got messed up, like how about Brees Hall though? Because Brees Hall get busy. Yeah, Brees Hall get busy. And he's always, like, those running backs, they're always, uh, they going to always get, like, those little uh, their fantasy points, those little drop-off passes, passes, screen yeah. passes, and stuff like that. So yeah. I think he's always going to ball out, and he's in a good situation for fantasy points, but he's just on a sucky team right now. Right. Same thing with Bill Belichick's team. I wouldn't touch anybody on that squad. Even though I know you got that running back, it's just, it's, they got too this, shake, this shaky would, of an offense. I agree with you. This would be my last week. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? If Ramondre Stevenson can't do nothing against the Raiders, I'm benching him <laughs> until he has a breakout game. Because the thing with Ramondre Stevenson is like you saying, he's not getting them little cheat points this year. Usually he give you like eight catches out the backfield. He's not even giving you that now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I would give it one more week. If he disappoints again, now, I definitely would now, catch him. If they have another horrible game, they get blown out by twenty something points again. What do you do with Bill Belichick then at that point? I mean, you you I guess you still gotta keep him to the end of the year. Yeah, goes, you but... Bill Belichick, I'm 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 advocating it is time for Bill Belichick to move on, but out of respect for his resume. You cannot let him go during this season. <laughs> you got, even if you get blown out five straight weeks by 40, you cannot let him. You just got to let him ride his season out. Pause. And that's an ugly way to go out on your career. Do you think if he done this year with New England, will he get picked up by another team or you think Bill Belichick is done? He, I'm me personally, I think he's done. Because you saying you New England don't got talent, but like I said before, Bill Belichick is handpicking his team, yeah. so he got the guys on his team that he wants. And I'm not just I'm, and I know they got a couple injuries because they lost the cornerback kid that was just a rookie, but he was getting busy. Um, what's his name? Gonzalez, I think. Yeah, but uh. He's picking all these guys. So, you know, and I don't think a lot of the newer guys, you don't see nobody going to New England. I don't think nobody wants to play for Bill Belichick. Yeah. Um, let's pick a couple games, though. Let's go Washington at Atlanta. Keep it a seed No, who wins this game. Actually, I'm rooting for Atlanta. I want them to win this week. After that horrible play from Washington last week, I'm, yeah, I'm going with Atlanta. 
Okay. Um, yeah. I'm taking, I think I'm going to take Washington. Atlanta just strikes me as one of them teams that, like, is going to, Vegas is going to always make money off of because they going to dangle them like, up, oh, they good this year. Oh, no, they not. We got y'all. So I'm, um, but how how do you, as it, how do you feel, though, that they let Witch McComb get off on them like that, uh, DJ Moore? Like, they had him, he had like 200 and something yards. Justin Fields has like a career game against Washington. I, w- I was pissed on that Thursday, or on that game. Well, I'm, I was I'm, hot. <laughs> that's Washington for you. They going to be one one week, they going to look like they're a great team. And then the next week, they going to lay an egg. Pause. So I'm not surprised. How about you said no Justin Jefferson, one and four Minnesota Vikings at the one and four Chicago Bears. Keep it a C note because DJ Moore a little banged up too. Pause. Um. This is definitely going to be a test for Justin. Um, I, I like. I'm picking the Bears, but Minnesota they're going to still get busy. I still think they know how to put up points without Justin Jefferson. Right. Um, uh, I think they still have a good system, but I'm putting my money on uh, the Bears. I hope that 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 momentum that they had from the last game keeps steamrolling into the next game. Right. Um, I'm going Minnesota. I think Minnesota finds a way to to, to win this game. Um, TJ Hawkinson, he dropped a couple passes in week five. I think he redeems himself, has a, has a big game. And um, Chicago missing the kid Herbert, too. Remember, he's out a couple weeks, the running back. Yeah. They got um, a couple running backs that are injured. They're in bad shape, though, in that position. Yeah. Uh, let's go New England. At Vegas, keep it a C note. Who you got? I'm picking Vegas. You going yeah. Vegas? Yeah. I'm going New England just because I know uh, Belichick. He be owning his assistant, and um, yeah, I think he continues to own his assistants. He might get all his wins this year off the Jets and his assistant coaches <laughs> just coaching other teams. But if if Jimmy G, if he's on his He's and Q's, and he actually balls. Vegas actually has a good squad. They got yeah. Jacoby Myers, and they got Devontae Adams. Yeah. And then Josh Jacobs. He's he's actually, he's been all right lately. Uh, um, By you saying that, I will say this. Josh Jacobs, he missed all training camp and everything. He signed right before week one. Mm-hmm. I say in a, I, I'm agreeing with you. I say in another week or two. As long as Jimmy G is healthy in another week or two, I think Josh Jacobs should have his bounce back. And I think second half of the season, Vegas is going to be a dangerous team. Yep. Um, last one. Let's go Detroit at Tampa Bay. Keep it a C note. Who you got? Oh, man. I'm going uh, Detroit on this one. I agree with you. I'm going Detroit as well. Let's talk basketball real quick. ESPN just put out their top 100 players coming into the season. It's a lot of controversy over their list. How do you feel about the list? Pause. The list is horrible, and I think ESPN is going to be done. If Stephen A. Smith ever left them, their ESPN is done. I don't know who, what interns are making these these lists, but I, I, I don't agree with it, but I think – as you get closer to number one, uh, I think they do have the right players. Uh, I just don't think they're they're completely in the right order. Like, if we was to talk about uh, the first ten, I right. agree with it, except for I don't think AD and LeBron should have been on it, the okay. top ten. I, I would have I would have substituted, like, a, a, a Jimmy Butler okay. or a, a, a Paul George. But see, Paul George... Um, if he can Be stay healthy, yeah. If he can stay healthy. So, so let me ask you this: How about any of them? You don't have no. Uh, what, well, give me one person that was ranked wrong that you think, but like, not that you saying back. You said top yeah, yeah, 10 like was like more... Kay Cunningham. Like uh, they they had him ranked really low, but then you got like somebody like Chet Holmgren. They they both had like injuries last year, right? But they faulted on the list for Kay Cunningham saying that he had a great rookie season, but. That second season, he got hurt. So we have to see how he's going to do this season, right. and his rankings will go up. But Chet Holmgren, he remained around the same. 
but they didn't give him that same fault. They they said, yeah, yeah, he was hurt or whatever, but they didn't fault him for that. Right, and you never even seen him play in the league yet. Yeah, and then they got, oh, man, uh, it, it, it's it's a lot. It's a lot, uh, guys, that's misplaced. Uh, Julius Randle, I think he was too low. Uh, there were some players in front of him. I'm like, what the hell? Um, who else was out there? Uh, do you think that was disrespectful, for Russell Westbrook? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they disrespected Russ. How about this? Like, I know Ja Moran had some issues with guns and all that, but now you're saying he's the 35th best player in the league? Like, knock it off, would you? Yeah, and they faulted him for that. And right. like, just like I said, that they did that for Kate Cunningham for his injury. They faulted John Morant for some antics that are off the court. Right. So, and I just think that that's pretty fucked up. I, I don't agree with this list, but I just think, like, after you get to, like, 15, they got the right players, but it's just not in the right places to me. Okay, now, Kyrie Irving spoke out about him being number 34. Yeah, he definitely should have been, to me, in the top 20. Right. I'm not a big advocate for Kyrie Irving, but him being the 34th best player is crazy. Yeah. To have him 34, and um, no disrespect to somebody like, because when you, when I looked at it, hold on, I wrote a couple of names down, and I'm like, how the hell do they got these guys here? No disrespect to Brandon Ingram, but you got him the 27th yeah. best player over guys like Kyrie and Ja. <laughs> no disrespect to Drew Holiday, but you got Drew Holiday 26. He's ranked higher than guys like Kyrie and Ja. Yeah. Pascal Siakam. I love yeah. Pascal Siakam game. He hustle and all that. He's gotten better, but him at 25? In front of Ja and Kyrie, like, come on, man. That that's definitely disrespectful. And even a couple other guys, like I, I like Jalen Brunson, but Jalen Brunson was a little yeah, bit too, too high, high, way too you high. Know what I mean, so and like Jalen Green, I thought he was a little too low. Okay. They they had him ranked at uh, eighty, like, and I thought he should have definitely been like in the, like the fifties or forties or something like that. And then Scoot Henderson has yet to prove himself right. and they placed him at 78 like right. hold up right. so you're gonna put the, what those 22 other players in front of him right yeah i, I mean behind him uh, i but, didn't i didn't i didn't like him being that high even no uh, um even with you mccall i know he defending rookie of the year but ben caro was over a lot of people too yeah i thought they had chris Stapps Porzingis ranked way too high i thought they had jordan Poole ranked too low they had him at 72 yeah, uh, and they had the fact like I like R.J. Barrett, but I do not believe R.J. Barrett. To me, I would take Jordan Poole over R.J. Barrett. That's just my per I would too. Yeah, and then uh, they got people like Walker Kessler in front of them. Right, like I don't agree with that shit. Okay, <laughs> Brooke Lopez, he made sixty nine. <laughs> Yeah, Brooke Lopez. He's, he's solid, but I thought he should have been like in the nineties or yeah, something. Yeah, he should be back further a little bit more. You know what I mean? Um, but let me ask you this, though. See, you said Jimmy and somebody else. Do you have a top 10 list? Like, who's your top 10 list going into the season? They list, I just want to mention it. They had AD at 10, Brian at 9, Shea at uh, 8, Kevin Durant at 7, Tatum at 6, Steph Curry at 5, they got Luka at 4, Embiid at 3, Jokic at two, and Giannis at one. That's ESPN's top ten list. And mine's is close to it. So at my number one, uh, you, Go, no, I was just start with uh, you starting at one. Uh, I'll start at ten. My number ten would be Devin Booker because okay. I, I'm replacing AD out. Okay. Uh, after that, I would have uh, uh, Paul George at nine. Yep, because uh, LeBron is going out. Okay. And then at number. Eight, I will have uh, Kevin Durant. Okay. Uh, seven, I'm putting Shy Gilders Alexander in front of him, in front right. of Durant. Uh, then I will have Jason Tatum. Okay. And num my number six, uh, I will have Steph Curry, uh, how they have it, number five. Right. Uh, number four, I will have Luca. Okay. Number three, I will have Joel. Number okay. two, I will have Joker. And number one, I will have Giannis. Okay. Yeah. All right, our list is similar. Um, but at ten, I'm going. At ten, I'm going to 
KD. Okay. I got KD at 10. I got Jimmy Butler at 9. Mm-hmm. I got Devin Booker at 8. I got Shea Giltris Alexander at 7. I got Tatum at 6. I got Steph at 5. At 4, I'm going in B. Okay, instead of Luka. <laughs> at 3, I'm going Luka. At 2, I'm going Jokic. And 1, I'm also going Giannis. Yep. Um, but what's your thoughts on it, though, people? First of all, what's your top 10 NBA players coming into the season? Keep it a C note. Let us know. How you feeling about ESPN's top 100 ranking of NBA players coming into the season? Do y'all agree with it? Should we call them a Uber, a call Uber a Jet? Uber. A Uber Jet. Keep it a C note. Let us know. But um, the reason why I got Luca over and B, man, is because I'm starting to believe uh, Joel Embiid is a one-trick pony. If he can't dominate you, dominate the game scoring, he don't dominate the game. Like, you take, for instance, that game seven. He had, like, what, 13, 15 points when they lost to Boston? Mm. Okay, if you're not shooting the ball or you're having a bad shooting game, all that is fine, but you got to be a monster at something else. You got to, if you're going to finish with 15 points, I need, like, 20, 25 rebounds from you. And I, and I, I need you to start punching shots. Like, I need you to be something yeah. good at something other than scoring. And to me, it seems like that that's all he is. I actually agree with you now, thinking about that. If you look at Lucas, uh, where he's at in his career and where uh, Joel is, like, I think right now, Joel, he's already at the top of his peak. Right. He's at the top of the mountain where he's not going to get any higher. Right. So he needs that those players around. But to me, Luca, like, I've seen some of his training video. I still think the bull has room to grow, to, to pull some tricks out of his bag and still a ball i still right. think he has room to elevate at, at his where he's at now and his uh at this point in his game right so but yeah joel he i think he's at the top and unless he has a good system around him i i, I actually might switch mine around thinking about that now I, having luca above joel so. and i i agree with you with the growing thing <laughs> because um Sometimes, and me and Vito was talking on, about this on the episode, Vito said Luca ain't nothing but James Harden, a no. bigger James Harden pause. But uh, I do think he has room to grow. One thing that I noticed, like, you know how sometimes you've been the best player your whole life, no matter what team you want? Mm-hmm. Sometimes it seems to me because Luca still doesn't trust his teammates. He he even though he may give you a triple double or he may average eight, nine assists, he don't trust his teammates like a Trey Young does. Like Trey Young is more of a willing passer. I will agree with that. Once Luca learns to trust his teammates or get better teammates, I think his assists will be a little bit, and that will make him better. Because some people think that he only passes when he's forced to. You don't think that it's the other way around? Like, he might be forced to shoot. Like, Luca is that ball. Like, why would you pass? For you at your stature and what you can, how you can ball, why are you not shooting the ball? Why are you passing it off to him? Why are you not taking that shot? Be- because at one point in time, you're going to need your teammates. That's- but, but I will say, when you saying that, because that was my next statement, no cat called me an Uber. To me, Luca plays in the NBA like the rest of the guys is from his national team. He, the way he dominates the ball is like he's still playing in EuroLeague. Like, that's the way. Am I wrong? No. no. You, he, you, he definitely, to me, has that, like, that European international type game. He, he, but, I, I mean, most Euro players come over here. And no matter how nice they've been, they'll be more willing passers. They'll fit. They'll blend more in. Luca come right over and give. I need thirty shots. You see what I'm saying? Like he's still playing, like he's over there, and these guys are on their level. To me, yeah. Um, I don't know if you see it, seen it, but the GMs did a vote, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they voted for every best position in the NBA. The GMs voted Steph is the best point guard. I agree. 
Devin Booker is the best two guard. Yeah, yeah. I believe it was. Because uh, who to, else is I, it? Bradley Bill or. But that, I, I want to get to that. I think they had Tatum at at the, the best small forward, maybe. Yeah. It'll be on the screen. They had Giannis as the best power forward. They had Jokic, that they voted Jokic the best center. But what I want to ask you is, um, because they did all the second and third place votes, but they got Luka multiple positions where he's like second and third. Like they got him as second best point guard. They got him like second best two guard. And they got him like third or second best three. Now, now that I don't like about Luka, because to me, sometimes I feel as though he's doing too much. If you got Kyrie on the floor, what what the hell is your position? Are you a six are you a six whatever point guard or are you gonna let Kyrie run the guard? I wish that Luca would like find a position and stick with it. I, I like right now I don't know what position Luca is because he can fluctuate from the point guard all the way up to what, the three or the four if right. you want. Yeah, but I mean it, it gotta be on somebody to designate that. Because yeah. how is it written on the on the depth chart? Do they got them both? Uh, see, look on um on 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 the Mavericks depth, depth chart. chart. Let's see what they got them listed as. But uh, yeah, if you got Kyrie, like I, I don't understand. Yeah, because I'm like I'm like they shouldn't have Luca ranked at three different positions, Paul. That's like a lot. But before we get out of here, I want to ask you something. Right, shout out to the homie Kilogram. Uh, rapper from uh, Jersey, and he had a post up about Drake's album and people, I guess, criticizing it. That's and, been trash. And I said, I, I told him it was trash, but to summarize, we were going back and forth, and he said, it can't be that trash if it's sold like that, right? Mm -hmm. My next reply was, Nelly went diamond, and he's not better than Jada Kiss. Now, he never replied on if Nelly was better than Jada Kiss, but he said, Jada is my guy, but I would take Nelly's career over Jada Kiss. Now, we just had this big thing with the Gilbert Arenas podcast. We also did it about, would you take $300 million and be James Harden, or would you take seven rings and $56 million and be Robert Ory? So what I want to ask everybody is, would you rather have Nelly's career, who had a three, four-year run where he sold a ton of albums, or would you rather have Jada Kiss' career where, where he's still doing stuff out here, still active, much more respected in the hip-hop community, even though he didn't sell the records, keep it a C-note, who would you take? I'm definitely not taking uh, Nelly's career. I'm definitely taking Jada's career. Um, like you said, he's still active. He's still doing stuff. And I would like to be known as one of the best at what I do. Right. Uh, I'm not taking money sales over some crappy content that I put out. Right. And I think Drake new album, yeah, it's going to sell because it's Drake's name on it. But that don't mean that the shit ain't garbage. Right. Um, same thing with Nelly. But Nelly, I guess his music was good to some folks, but it just wasn't my my our our lane. To me, he's more so on that flow rider that side of yeah. You know right. I mean, Q one hundred and two type of uh, folks. But for me and the culture that I'm in, I I, I vibe with Jada. I, I like what he's done, and right. I would take his career all day. Like, Jada's well-respected, and you know <laughs> what he can do. Right. <laughs> and Nelly, like, he's still performing his old songs from, like, 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> right. And my my thing is, when we doing these things, like, everything can't be about the money. Like, you'll just take a person whole career for the money. I'm not taking Nelly. I know Nelly went diamond. I know he sold... He probably sold more on that Diamond album than Jada Kiss sold with all his albums combined. And I still wouldn't take Nelly. Nobody, no, like you said, Jada is mentioned as one of the top yep. guys yep. to this day. Like, a lot of people's debating, is he top five? Should he be higher? Like, because he really get bit. Nobody like, is talking about Think Nelly. about it like this. I mean, you, you as a rapper, even if you're Jada Kiss, you could be, 
at your house or whatever, people are still bumping your music going down the street. I don't hear nobody playing nobody, no Nelly stuff. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, gotta go I'm, to like a party or something. To I'm, to that I'm, shit. I'm, I'm cool on Nelly. Like, I'm cool nah. on, respect to him though. I, yeah, I just, no, think, re, re, he, I just res, think he's in a re, different lane though. Respect but. to Nelly, but just remember, if you're take, if you say, yeah, I'm taking Nelly career, then that means you gotta get in them ciphers and you gotta rap like Nelly. Uh, then, man, <laughs> I'm, that's what I'm saying. You got. Come on, man. Y'all got to stop it, man. With these money plays, man, it's it, it, it's ridiculous. But again, shout out. Kilogram, respect is respect. If you rather take a diamond album and, and and some hits over credibility and longevity, I'm cool with that. So you you thought Drake album trash? Trash. Yeah. Bottom of the barrel trash. And people tried to argue with me. Shout out to everybody to argue. Shout out to Vito and Kyle especially because they made me feel as though I was wrong. I went back and had to, I, I said Kendrick's album you can listen to more than Drake's last two albums. They told me I was crazy. I had to go back and listen. And yeah, Kendrick's album, last album, ain't the best album, but it has way more playable songs than this Drake album. I'm just keeping it a C-note. Yeah, um, yeah I, that. I thought it was pure trash. But then at the same time, I think Drake was smart enough to put like at least a couple clever bars in each song that I don't know that 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 would keep him relevant. It was a couple. It was a couple bars on on maybe a multiple songs. Where I was like, all right, that that was a like cool ass bar. But that was it to me. Right. The 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 whole album was. Right. And I'm a big J Cole fan. I wasn't a fan of that song with him and J Cole. I'm still trying to figure it out because it's almost like was shots being thrown in that that song. I yeah, on the low, uh, on the low, J. Cole threw shots at Drake. Drake, that's yeah. what I thought. And I'm yeah. like, am I hearing this right? <laughs> yeah, on the low, he let him know, like, Drake, even Joe Button recently was talking about it. Drake came on a track, like, on a friendly We Homie to J. Cole. He kind of started it on that note, but, but he like, hold on, let me let, let you know. know, too. You know what I mean? And I don't know. I think, yeah, J. Cole definitely was throwing shots at Drake and everybody on that song. Um, You got anything else? No, that's it. We about to wrap this episode up, people. Definitely appreciate everybody for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time tuning in, salute to you. Do us a favor. Make sure you hit the sub button, like button, and the bell so you can stay notified when we drop new content. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. If you agree with something, disagree with something, want to correct us on something, or if you just want to call us an Uber, let us know in the comments. Just make sure you keep it a C note. And please share this video with someone that likes to talk sports and entertainment just like you so that we can all talk that talk together. As always, I am your boy Brown. To the left of me, we got your boy John. Eagles gear on. Shout out sure. to the Eagles, 5 and 0. Shout out to Vito's boys, 5 and 0. Shout out to the Ramley. Cooper Cup is back. We're going to have a big, a big second half pause. But tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell everybody, keep it a C note. We holla at y'all. Peace. This is what I'm feeling like. Da 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da.